Hello Africa, welcome to it. Once again, Foot Africa presents Game On as we continue to tell the story of the 2023 uh, Total Energies Africa Cup of Nations. I'm Sizo Mapena, joined by Chris and Ade, my brothers here, and there's so much to talk about uh, in the way of the results that have come in so far. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire, as the host nation, of course, did the business. There was no surprise there for many that felt Cote d'Ivoire would uh, win that match. And then, in the next two matches that follow, eyebrows are raised in that things didn't necessarily go according to plan. And then there was the one upset, depending on whether you think Ghana is still a giant on the African continent or not. So, before we get things started, spare thoughts here for my brother, Ade, <laughs> from Nigeria originally. And uh, business as usual, is it? <laughs> Con condolences to the Nigerian. Oh, with, fr oh, with, wow. with, with friends like these, who needs enemies? <laughs> I don't, I don't even know where to start. We'll get to the Nigeria results. But uh, so far, let's talk tournament in the whole, Chris. Yes. Goals, excitement, no, no, no scoreline, and entertainment, including the surprises you need at an African Cup of Nations. Nothing necessarily goes according to plan here. The beauty about this AFCON, let's start with the weather. Yeah. <clears throat> the time the game is playing is not hot from the sun. That is mm -mm. not the problem. Mm -mm. The humidity. Yeah. Today we are talking about 91% humidity. That is extremely hot. True. And if you want to try, just put 10 kilograms in your bag and try to go up here <laughs> for you to understand what those players are feeling mm. at the moment. But regardless of that, the game did not start very weak. We had the host nation getting two quick goals. Yep. They're winning that game 2 nil, which is good for them. Yeah. Give them the opportunity to make some changes. Mm -hmm. The following day, we have Nigeria. Listen, they, they were not beaten. No. But they, they could have won the game. But should it have is, won. Should have won. Should the have. Game. Must have. But in football, should have, must have, uh, it does not count. So that game, once again, we saw two goals being scored. The Egypt game, though, it is the first game that they brought a lot of flair because mm. we saw four goals being scored. Regardless of you look at it, four goals being scored, it is amazing. And of course, uh, uh, Cabo Verde versus Ghana, uh, you say, depending where you look at, listen. Ghana is among the multiple winner of this tournament. Every tournament they go, four time you, wins. You, you should expect them to win. So uh, this was a, a disappointing Nigeria. Fair but, enough. But Cabo Verde, I still remember them 2013 when they came in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And when you look at where they are today, you have to give them a kudu. We certainly have to. But let's go back to the opening game here. Yeah. Uh, important game. Uh, in the way of uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea-Bissau. Host nation, in front of your home fans, sold out stadium. You want to hit the ground running. You want to send out a message to everybody else. You want to unite the nation That's in right. getting behind you. Yeah. you. You believe Cote d'Ivoire went about it the right way? Definitely they did. Um, first of all, they matched that um, beautiful spectacle of our mm. opening ceremony. Mm. And their performance was just as colorful yeah. and yeah. amazing. I yeah. liked um, Seiko Fofana's performance, it was a man of the match performance, he mm. commanded, he bossed that midfield around and um, also the goalkeeper for Guinea, um, he was amazing too. In played that his game. part, yeah? Yes, played his part. When you look at the way the first game set up, both coaches they set up the team in the 4-4, four, four, I mean 3-3-4. Three, three, what I mean by 4 3 4 Yeah, 4 3 3, three, yeah. four, three I was coming yeah. from, from the front back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The reason they did that is when you're playing in the condition that you find yourself in Côte d'Ivoire, mm. you don't need players to make long runs and running all the time. Mm -hmm. And But we saw uh, Côte d'Ivoire changing that immediately. They move Bamba and the Bonga wide. Wow. Yeah. And they're forcing, yeah. forcing the midfield to go wide with them so that they can come in the middle. And the, that play was very good. That's why you see Sangari and you see uh, Bemba coming inside and finding themselves in the box and they're getting those shots and attacking. So that mm. was a very good tactic using by, uh, by Cote d'Ivoire. What does it mean? By leading 2-0, it gives the coach a chance of changing players. Because now we got what we needed. We needed three points. We got the three points. Let's make changes. And I look, I said it, I still believe Guinea-Bissau, they can go out in this group. If you look at what's happened in the second game. Yeah. So Guinea-Bissau, they did not have a bad game. They no. started to win. Mm -hmm. But as the game starts progressing, you see Balde coming into the game. You see uh, Samedo in the midfield start controlling the game a little bit, even though my man of the match is supposed to be Kessie, because the way Kessie was playing, you don't see him, mm. but he was always there. But give it to Joko, their goalkeeper. He did a great job in stopping all those goals going in. So yeah. losing the game 2-0 against the host nation, 
It was not a bad performance. Now, there'll be great expectation on Jean Louis Gasset, the uh, coach of uh, Cote d'Ivoire and his team. Yes. Uh, let's give him a marking and the team marking out of 10 and saying, look, in getting the tournament started, how much are we giving him? Nine. 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 So Nine. that means you see in Cote d'Ivoire making all the right moves here in this group so far. I believe, and they're making um, the 12th, in this case, the 13th man count because yeah. the crowd got behind them. Um, even though in a 60,000 seater capacity, I expected like more, like, more presence mm. behind them mm. from the crowd. But still, that was still good enough. They got behind their team. And I think Ivory Coast is going to go really far in this tournament with um, their home ground advantage. For me, I think we have a problem of audio in the stadium because uh, I spoke with people who were present. They yes. said the atmosphere, atmosphere. it was yes. amazing. Yes. But we did not get no, it from get the it. TV set. No. Mm. I, I might just uh, quantify the nine he gave to the coach. I'll give him eight, but the nine that he gave to the coach is, you are leading 2-0 and you make all the five substitutions. Most coaches they will keep the team as it is. But for me, that is a tournament management. Not game, but tournament management. So he did very well. When you say that then, Chris, I have to ask you, the second goal was scored in the 58th minute, just before the 60th. Yes. How important is it that it came that early in the second half to allow those five substitutions? Exactly. And when no, you're going to hold off a bit. And when you made that substitution, you give the player that came in minimum 20 minutes mm, each. That's a good point. So you are going to the second game, you know almost um, seven 70% of your squad touched the ball, ran, and they played, which is very good because the substitution that they came in, if you look at the player that they came in, you have a Wooly Bolly, you have a Karim Konate, you mm. have Nicola Pepe, so, Serge Aurier. Those players are top players, my yes. friends. Yes. <laughs> so, which means you almost play all your cards, all your 16 players touch the ball and they run and they have the feel. Of, of the, the tournament, of the yeah. tournament the, sock, the, the, the support of the supporters. So for me, when you think about it, his tournament management so far from the first game is good. What was interesting is that he made those changes immediately yes. after the uh, second, the second goal, goal was called. He wasted no time in uh, making those changes. And of course, that result meant pressure on Nigeria oh, and the Equatorial so Guinea. Yeah. Uh, we're playing, of course, the next day. So yeah. they, they had to sit overnight and, and think about it and dwell on what they witnessed in that first day. Um, many that watched that game, I'm, I'm, I'm amongst those that watched that game and felt, yes, Nigeria concedes first. Yeah. But you do the right thing, which is so rare in uh, matches of, uh, of this caliber. You equalize immediately. <laughs> and then there's time, there's chances. Nigeria could have still won by a 3 0 scoreline, by a three goal scoreline. That's right. 4 1, 5 1. Could have, should have. Yes. Yes. And, and um, at this level of the game, if you don't finish your, your chances up, it's going to catch up to you later mm -hmm. in the game. And um, I think Nigeria had a sloppiness about them. Yeah. It's going back to what Chris said about the humidity. I'll blame it on the weather for this one. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me. He's reaching, he's reaching. Yes. Excuse because, me. Because their pace, you see? Excuse they outpaced the, their the, Yeah, I, I mean, but for me, I, fe I, I felt like they could have passed the ball quicker. Listen, uh, if quicker. Let, 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 let's throw a spell in the so, works here quickly. And then Victor Seme also yeah. missing that terrible chance. That's was, not the only one. It was criminal. But Moses that, Simon. So many yeah. chances we could point. Let's, let's look at the numbers in contrast here. Yeah. And see that Nigeria, maybe one could, after seeing the numbers, argue Nigeria opened up their opponents at will. Um, for uh, the uh, Nigerians, 19 shots in total. Yes. That's a lot in an international That's match. Seven on target. Mm -hmm. The opponents had seven shots in total. One on target, they scored from it. Yeah. Right. Salvador. Yes. So, football wise, we have to be honest. The game finished 1 1. But mm -hmm. football wise, there were no competition this game. No, they played them off the park. Uh, Nigeria play against themselves mm -hmm. in this game. Nigeria lost to Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria lost to Nigeria. <laughs> I will give it to Nigerian pressure from the fans. Oh. The expectation. Listen, Nigeria is, I said it before Nigeria played that, we are talking about mighty Nigeria. So that yes. mightiness comes mm. from Nigerian people. They believe their team can win and must win every single game. How do you see it? I play football. The moment Victor received the ball, after the game it was 1-1, he received the ball in front of him, the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. In any situation, he would have not put it in the right hand side, a uh, left hand left side. Hand. Mm. He would have put it right. 
But True. there, if it was playing for Napoli, yeah, that's the what they would do. The pressure <laughs> of of being a bit, I'm a Nigerian, so I'm a bit cheeky. Mm. So he's putting it just where the leg of the goalkeeper is, and okay. But when you look at it behind him, it was very far. He missed the target like crazy. Mm. So you look at other chances because when you look at the performance itself, Nigeria they were playing against themselves. The only time that the team start playing, your position, the quarter Guinea start playing is when you believe this mighty team are not scoring, yeah, yeah. they might have a chance here. They give you the belief. They start yeah, giving the belief. Yeah. But in reality, yes, it is 1-1, but what I saw from Nigeria, it is 10 times better than what I saw from Ghana. Now, having heard what Chris said, Nigeria played well. Nigeria right. opened up the opponents almost well, at will. But our, the our, numbers suggest that. Yes. What I'm trying to now find out from you is, to, yes, 1-1, yeah. disappointing scoreline. Mm. And I can understand why it's disappointing. Mm -hmm. But does it not give you the hope going forward that we're still good enough to compete? It's okay, well, it's not a loss in the opening. Yeah. Yes, yes, Nigeria's yes. Going yes. Um, going out of this goal. Yes. Going out as in going further in yes, the tournament? Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with Chris on that one. I will be controversial here. See what you're saying about the fans and the pressure? Yeah, because <laughs> what I'm seeing is a lack of cohesion. They're not playing as a team, mm -hmm. you know? They're, they're, they're individual stars trying to shine on the ball. And we're going to get to Mozambique and, and Egypt. That's a classic example of when a team is playing together. I'm seeing individual stars trying to, you know, prove they're the best on the content, a bit of overconfidence, really. Mm. A clinical team, a team that is serious about winning the AFCON. Oh, you would have scored like three goals by halftime. You wouldn't be that wasteful. And before the tournament, Nigerians were worried about the injuries. They were worried about if the coach was good enough. Mm. Even the goalkeeper, people were doubted mm. if the goalkeeper was good enough. And I, and I think against the bigger sides, they're going to be found out a bit against Ivory Coast. We don't have it's to going to be a yeah <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, you would see what I'm talking about. Now, before we get out of this group, I just need to get your thoughts, guys, on Equatorial Guinea and Guinea Bissau here. Um, yeah, they for Equatorial Guinea get this all important draw. Yeah, all important point. It's a poster. Yeah, uh, for Guinea Bissau, yes, you lose in the first against uh, the host nation. Against the host nation, understandable. Yeah, for a nation that's <laughs> never won a game at an yeah. Afcon before. Yes. Uh, well, how do you foresee their chances going forward? There's well, hope for one. Well, the hope is, I keep on saying, they, they will get the three points. They, mm -hmm. they can and they could beat uh, Equatorial Guinea. And uh, this group, they're going to have three teams going through. I keep on saying it. They're going to have Cote d'Ivoire go through, Nigeria will go through. And uh, that is between Equatorial Guinea and uh, Guinea-Bissau. One of them will go through. So this group, it is much open than uh, the other that we've seen so far. When we discussed Group B, yeah. we uh, spoke of the difficulty of nations like Mozambique yes. in that they're improving. Cape Verde, we've known for a long time yeah. now that they, they have a presence on the continent. They respect it. Mm -hmm. And um, again, Egypt need VAR late in the game <laughs> well, they, to, they, to yes. save them. Great call by VAR, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Listen, it, it, we had two calls from VAR, one from Ghana and one from Egypt. Mm. Both of them are correct. On the money. Le, the, the, the VAR can only give you the option, but the referee must make the decision. Yeah. The referee here made good decisions in both situations. Mm -hmm. When you look at, we go back, we look at Egypt game. Mm. I know people are looking at Egypt 2-2, two -two, they were 2-1 two down. They did not do anything wrong in this game. They play football, they push the ball around. But you can see, physically, they could not move. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the Mambas here. The moment they went ahead, they made it very difficult because now Egypt needed to chase the game. So you are chasing the game, when you have a less, yesterday it was 87% humidity. Today is 91. Nine, today is 91. You are chasing the game when it's so hot. And the, back in your mind, you are saying, last AFCON, we did not have to win the first game for us to go all the way. Okay. Therefore, 2-1 is not bad. We're not doing anything bad. And let's keep on pushing. But still, Mo Salah missed a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Mm. An open goal. Yep. It could have been a different game. Yeah. So is Mozambique a top team? No. Was Egypt in the bad day? Yes. Is yes. Mozambique a top team? Chris says no. And yes, we but say they're, they're but not. They're, but How much of a role did they play in the pothole Egypt ran into yesterday? Because <laughs> Mozambique <laughs> certainly yes, like played a role here. <laughs> yes, I mean, I like the fact that you used the term pothole. Yeah. <laughs> it was a pothole. There were 
well organized for me. Um, they stopped Egypt actually from really um, taking advantage of their attacking prowess really. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a Mustafa Mohammed that I've yeah. been telling people about. That striker is lethal. And for me, I think he's going to be actually a candidate for the Golden the, Boots the in golden this boot. tournament. This Very is, sharp. And for Mozambique, for me, it was witty. The way that boy used the wide and using his left foot, it, every time he takes a ball, he made me think of Mosul and Liverpool. Mm, he attacked yes. the defender. Yes. He, he was always attacking uh, Hamdi Saraf yes. all the time. And then making sure always that on his shoulder he, exactly and when he get there he put it inside so for me the way they played you use the term cohesion they do have a team spirit going yes. there is one player that i did not like it was in the midfield i think you the show bolting was quite a lot for <laughs> me uh, villa colos really uh, yeah he, he was standing he was soft he was slow he, he sometimes he held on the ball quite long but the remaining of the team were a fight it was good quickly we have to we have to talk about this guys yes. for me the result of the tournament so far Cape Verde, Ghana. Mm. <laughs> the result of the tournament. Why? Black stars not Why? shining. Because you, because you regard Ghana as a top nation in football. And, and I, I think Cape Verde take every opportunity over the years to remind us that they're a nation we can't ignore. Mm. Listen, Cape Verde, this is where you have to understand. Now the football is, Afcon has been shown all around the world. Yeah. Baby is coming. Cape, Ver <laughs> Cape Verde players yeah. play in Portugal's second division. Mm -hmm. Now, Everybody's going to see them playing in the national tournament. Sell themselves. And I want to say more. And I want to point out to the fact that look at the times where the goals were scored in the 17th minute and the 92nd minute. Mm -hmm. Listen, when you score very early in a match, you really disorientate your, your opponent. opposition. Mm -hmm. And then you score that late into extra time. Montero and Rodriguez, it so, was it was just too much for the Black Stars to deal with psychologically. So what he's saying, we, we can extend on it. 17th minute is a crucial time. From 0 to 15th minute is very important. Here this is going right. 17th minute. Mm -hmm. You know the first 15 minutes you are not yet out of your change room. Mm. You are still processing what the coach said, are we having the position where we are supposed to be and everything. You are not yet switched on in the game. Yeah. Yes. Boom, they got one nil down. They continue playing, Ghana did what they did, they go to the second half. Ghana are thinking, what is happening here? In the second half, after 10 minutes, boom! Because they are still coming to the change room, uh, Cap Virgin. Yeah. So they are coming to the change room where the coach said, yeah, we're leading one nil, we have to do this, we have to do... Within the 10 minutes, Ghana score. Yep. They are not switched on. Mm. Now the game is 1-1. Ghana are thinking the whole continent they are talking about us not winning this game. We have to push. Yeah, sure. They bring the day, the day are you. They start playing in the left hand side like a kid. Uh, <laughs> Once the ball is in the left hand side, everybody's there, nobody's that side. So their mind now is going, okay, in this game, even if we get one point, it's fine because the second game we're going to push. Boom! Late and, the and, and they were missing the dyna dynamism of uh, Mohamed Kudus. Yeah. They you were love missing the boy, that. Yeah, yeah oh, Man. Okay, he has only one foot. <laughs> yeah. He has only one foot. Yeah. That's the only thing I would say is wrong with him. Yeah. But he gives Ghana that cutting edge in the final third. Mm. Also, uh, for those of you that may not have uh, come across the report, at the end of the game, Chris Uten, the Ghanaian mm. coach, he went to the team hotel yeah, uh, where is. a Ghanaian fan, uh, we don't know the reasons, but we'll assume because of the loss, mm -hmm. um, well, jumped him, well, accosted him. And uh, ended up she being jumped, uh, he jumped him. <laughs> <laughs> ended up being arrested. Yeah. So I, I, the assumption is it's because they lost the the game in the manner the in which they the, did. The, and the, the thing with football, which we don't have to condemn any violence. No, we don't. We don't. But football is not a diplomatic mission. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we've seen when it. the fan probably lives in Cote d'Ivoire mm. or travelled to Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. He went through a lot of things for him to be in that game. Yeah. And then losing the game, he loses his mind. For me, it is nothing to do with the coach. The unsuccessful number of passes coming from Ghana. Yeah, too many. <laughs> too many. Not in this level. Not in this level. I know Nigerian fans would want that particular fan to visit the Nigerian <laughs> changing room, the Super Do them a favor. Yeah, just, just speak to the coach for us. <laughs> but, but, okay, between us, what did the coach do wrong? 
in well, the Super like Eagles say, game. The passes weren't, weren't, weren't working but out. But that's not coach. Maybe the intensity yeah. is not where it should be. That is oh, not yeah. coach. Many, many people look at the coach, and maybe yes. you'll find <laughs> yes. some but some why? some may not have believed in Chris Hutton going into the tournament. True. And they, now he's, he's thinking, ah, you see, I told you, it's this guy. True. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and that's the issue. So, guys, we have to end looking back. We have to look forward. Uh, again, I have to currently mention that uh, Senegal are currently leading their match 2 0. By the time we finish here, that match should be finished. Uh, we look forward to the matches that uh, will be coming up uh, after this.